I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to the Mexico City Plaza here in Mexico City. Our main event should be a good one tonight. Ten rounds of middleweight action. Boy, and we expect this to be a big night of action. We spoke with both fighters yesterday. Fireworks anticipated here tonight. Let's see. During your training career, is this the type of matchup that you liked when you had a power puncher facing another power puncher? No, I hated it. I never wanted to fight a big banger. I wanted to be the only guy in that ring that brought that to the party. Good one-two by Silk. There's no need to be on Walks the away that headshot. Harris is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Nice strike after catching one by Silk. Just holds on there. Nice one. How about a return to sender with the left hand? What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Sue. Harris is stunned by a big shot. Teddy, I think he's going to go down. I think he's going to get him down after getting tagged right there. He doesn't know where to go. I mean, he's like a guy that's caught in a hailstorm. He's trying to get to the other side of the street, but he just doesn't know where it is now. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. He digs into the body again. Don't stand toe to toe with this guy. Harris is back. Look at him here in the start of this round. Remember, he got tagged hard in that last round. Well, that's the reward you get when you have a good camp and you get yourself in top shape. Blocks that belt line well. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Protecting his head well with his guard. Not able to land the headshot. Comes right back with some offense of his own. Through your career, Teddy, you have trained fighters who have different physical makeups, different mental makeups, but many of them have gone on to win the world titles. What is the one common trait they all have with their approach to training? Well, they might not have it at the beginning, but they develop it as they go on. And it's two things. One is to separate the truth from the lies understand what they have control over, which is everything. Sometimes early on they think their opponent has control over those things. But they always have the choice to make a decision and be able to deal with something or not. And the other thing is to not allow pressure to distort time, where they think a moment, a difficult moment, is going to go on forever. It's only a couple seconds. And if they get past those couple seconds, they're going to be okay. is missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Sil. Really good work right there, landing the two punches in sequence by Sil. End of the round here, as we're ringside at our fight night venue. Of course, we're on the road with you every step of the way with a fine crew. We got to give credit to the crew there. Robbie and Rick back in the production truck doing a nice job, all cramped up in a tractor trailer. Yeah, they do a great job. They allow us to go on the air and uh, allow us to do the fun part while they're doing the grunt work. They're doing all the difficult things back there. Of course, Mike, Brian, all those guys. We appreciate you very much, and um, we're not taking you out to dinner tonight. Able to cover up that gut. 
Milton. He's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Reload. Let's give the trainers Reload. credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. 90 seconds to go here in this round. Silk's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Takes a step back, then the counter punch by Silk. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Jab right hand. That worked out really well. Throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. Took a shot, now he gives a left. Harris's fatigue is starting to play a major factor in this fight now. He is having trouble landing any of these punches. Yeah, and it's not because his opponent all of a sudden is a great defensive whiz. You know, he's not Claude Waynes. He didn't all of a sudden become the invisible man. It's just that he's not landing because he's thrown him from too far away, as you said, very tired. Ten seconds to go in this round. And that does it for this round. Beginning of round number four, Teddy, the way your scorecard reads, he's up three rounds to zip. Good, accurate punching, earning him that lead. Yeah, very conservative, hasn't wasted anything, but as you just touched on, has made everything count. Teddy, what would you recommend based on what we're seeing here tonight? Well, two aspirin and then, go, oh no, actually I would say a little counter punching would be just what the doctor ordered. That's a better prescription for him. Paris is the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. He returns the favor with a right hand of his own. seconds to go in round number four. Snapping <laughs> jab by Silk. Comes right back with a shot of his own. And a good, solid one-two combo by Silk. Silk's knowledge of the game. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Wow! He goes down. Oh, he may be close here. Can he survive the round? Two. End of the round there, a round in which we did see the knockdown. And Teddy, when a fighter comes back to the corner, having just been floored, typically how are they acting? What are you seeing on them? Just imagine you just walked into a room and somebody hit you from behind. You dropped. You're afraid to go in that room again. So put a light on in that room and explain to him why he got dropped. He will not be afraid to go back in that room. Hugging on the inside. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. You see, he sits and waits and then strikes with that counter punch by Silk. Silk's basically doing exactly what we've always seen out of him, and that's after he's been knocked down and affected in this fight. Yeah, you know, there comes a time you have to make adjustments. That time has come for him. Harris is proving to be elusive. Teddy, we know what the problem is. He's getting hit by left hands. Offer up the solution. Well, Joe, there's three lines of defense. Either you're blocking punches, you're moving your head, or you're using his leg. The problem, he's not using any of those. Pulls 
the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. Just like that. Silk's able